And now I'd like to show you how you can save your own custom looks in Snapseed app so you can easily generate new editing ideas in the future. Now, what are looks in Snapseed app? Well, to keep it simple, a look is an edit you've done in the past and you can save that edit inside the Snapseed app. So when it comes time to edit a new photo, you can quickly preview what the new photo would look like if the same editing was done on that photo. So this gives you two benefits. Uh, number one is that it's a faster way to do copy-paste photo editing, especially if you're going to be editing multiple photos in a similar fashion. But another uh, use case for the looks function in Snapseed is that if you save multiple looks, over time you'll de develop a library of photo editing ideas and when it comes time to edit a new photo, uh, you can quickly uh, apply all your past edits to that photo to see which one looks best. And that way, uh, you can often come up with unique or creative ideas for your future edits that you probably would not be able to think of otherwise. And that's the power of creating your own custom looks in Snapseed app. So let's open up Snapseed and let me show you how to do it. To show you how to work with custom looks, I'd like to open one of the photos we've edited earlier in the course. So if you've been following along uh, the edits, then you have this photo on your iPhone. If not, unfortunately I cannot give it to you because of how non-destructive editing works. So I'll need to open from device and I'll open the folder where I have all the edits from the course. And I'm interested in this photo of a woman in a blue coat. So I'm going to open that photo and now you'll see it's open. So if we go to the edit history, you can see that essentially we started with the original, we cropped the image, and then we used tune image uh, to really emphasize shadows and to slightly increase saturation as well. So that's good. I'm gonna go back now and I'll see how I can save this edit as a custom look in Snapseed. So in order to access looks, you need to tap on the icon at the top right and this opens up a whole bunch of different looks that you could potentially apply to your image. You can do last edits but I found this to be a little bit unreliable because you never really know what's actually last. At least that's been my experience. You have a whole bunch of looks that Snapseed has already saved. You can play around with some of these but frankly they're so specific that I'm not a big fan of them. Or if you scroll all the way to the bottom uh, you will have the option to add your own looks. So that's what I'd like to do now. I'm gonna tap X for now, because we're not gonna use any of the predefined looks. And instead, I'm gonna tap on the plus sign at the bottom of the screen, and this allows me to save the current edit as a custom look. So remember, the current edit consisted of a crop and tune image. And when I save it as a look, crop will be removed, but everything we did in tune image will be saved as a part of this look. So let's give it a try. I'm going to call this look shadows because that's what we are really doing with it. We're bringing out strong shadows. So I'm just going to name it shadows and I'll tap okay. And now you'll see that our custom look appears at the bottom of all the predefined looks. And if we scroll down even more, there's this three dots icon. And if you tap on that, you'll see all the looks you currently have saved. And at this point, we just have shadows. It also says one step, and that's kind of important here because when you save a look, it will automatically remove things such as uh, cropping or rotation, perspective changes, and so on. So only changes to the color itself will be saved in the look. And finally, if we wanted to delete this look, we could use the trash icon as well. But now I'm gonna go back and Instead, I'm going to open another photo and I'll see if this look that we just saved is a good fit for it. So I'm going to tap open and I'll tap open again. I'll have to open from device and I've created the folder to make this a little bit easier and the folder is called custom looks and I'm going to open this first photo. So this photo it's kind of similar to the previous one in the sense that we have really strong shadows, we have subjects that are partially illuminated, and if we apply a similar edit to this image, I think it should also work. 
So on the right hand side, where we have all the looks, I'm just going to go down and I'm going to find shadows, which is the look that we just saved. And if I tap my finger on shadows, you'll see uh, that the photo was automatically edited. And if we do it before and after by tapping and holding on the screen, I think we've been able to improve this photo quite nicely. So I'm really happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and apply this specific look and I'll save the image so that we have a copy with the look applied. So what you've seen so far is essentially just another way to do copy paste editing. If I had a lot of photos that were kind of similar to this, uh, it is probably easier to just create a look once and then to apply this look to all these photos the way I just showed you. I think it's easier than going into edit history every time and adding in the edits there, but either option works fine. So let's see what happens if we try to apply this exact same look to another photo. So I'm going to uh, tap open again, open from device, I'll locate the correct folder, and I'm going to select the second photo. So once again, this photo is kind of similar because it comes with strong shadows, it's also a street photo, and I think that the same look should work here as well. So I'm going to tap on all the looks on top right, I'm going to scroll down to the shadows look that we just created. And if I select that, and if I apply, you will see that the shadows have indeed become stronger. But I also think that we've kind of introduced a saturation problem. So if we compare the original to the final version, you'll see uh, that this wall starts to look kind of green, yellow, brown, even red. There are all these tones on the wall that probably weren't there in real life. So I think the saturation is a little bit too strong for this specific edit. But it turns out that's not a problem because looks can be used as starting points for your edits. So if I now go to Edit History, View Edits, you'll see that this look really consists of just one step called Tune Image. And we have the option to either delete or apply it as a mask or to modify Tune Image. So I'm going to choose to modify it by tapping on the three sliders. And now we're inside to an image and we can see what we've actually done. So we've increased saturation to plus 30 and we've decreased shadows to minus 50. And I think shadows are fine, but to me saturation is too strong. So what I want to do is to simply take it all the way back to zero. And now I can tap on the OK check mark. And if we now look at what we've been able to do, we started with this original, uh, we brought down shadows to get this more beautiful photo. So the point I'm trying to make is this. All these looks are just starting points for your edits. They don't have to be the final look of your edits. If anything inside a look doesn't work, feel free to open that look, look at the uh, edit history, modify any steps you need to modify. You can even delete specific steps. And then you can create an edit that works really good for that specific photo. So I'm going to go back and I'll make sure I save my work. And this is another example of how you can use looks. Now, everything we've covered up to this point in this video is essentially still copy-paste editing. And looks are great for copy-paste editing. But that's not the only thing they can be used for. They can also be used to generate ideas for your future edits. But for that, you need to have multiple looks. So what I'm going to do now is quickly open several photos we've edited in this course, and you should have them on your iPhone if you did the edits together with me. And I'm going to open up all these photos and I'll save them as custom looks so that we have more than one look to choose from. So I'm going to hit open and I'll do this fairly quickly. Open from device, custom looks, and here um, I'll open the sunset photo which you should have on your phone. So this was the original, this is after the edit. And if I'm going to do more sunsets, I might as well save this look. So I'm going to tap on looks at top right. I'll go all the way down. I'll tap the plus icon. And I'm going to call this look sunset. OK, so now you'll see that we have shadows and sunset. So that's good. And now I'd like to just create a couple more looks. So I'll hit open again. Open from device. I'm going to open this photo that you should also have on your iPhone. And here, if we do a quick before and after, then this is what we started with. And this is what we have in the end. 
And the goal of this edit was to create a sharp photo. So I'm going to go ahead and save this look. And I'm going to call it sharp. OK. And finally, I'm going to open just one last photo that we've worked with in the past. And I'm going to save that as a custom look as well. So I'm going to open this black and white photo. And if we look at what we've done here, um, it was a whole series of steps involving perspective, cropping, healing, and so on. Uh, but if we save it as a look, then those steps will not be saved. Uh, instead, it will just save the things we did in Tune Image and other modules that affect the entire image, but that aren't specific to any one photo. So I'm going to call this look black and white. So I'll keep it simple, call it BW, and save it. So now I have four custom looks. I have shadows, sunset, sharp, and black and white. Now at this point, I could keep creating more looks. And in fact, it would probably be a good idea to go through your past edits and to save many of them as looks, as long as they don't have any masks or selective uh, adjustments. Uh, but if they don't, uh, it's a good idea to save them all as looks. And then you'll have more uh, looks that can guide the inspiration of your future edits. But four is enough for me to show you how it works. So now I'm going to hit open again. And this time I'm going to open a photo that I have not edited yet. So it's also in the custom looks folder. And it is this beautiful photo that we selected in one of the earlier uh, videos in this bonus module. So when I open a photo like this, you know, sometimes I might already know what kind of edit I'm looking for, but a lot of times I don't know. And if I don't know, uh, then looks come in really handy in terms of deciding how to edit this photo. And if we go down to our custom looks, and if we now look at shadows, we'll see how that affects this photo. I don't think it's a good fit, but it gives me one idea for how I could potentially edit this photo. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have sunset, and this gives me another idea. And the power of this is that these edits are applied instantly. So you just swipe through them and you see what happens. Then we have sharp, which create, gives me a totally different look. And finally, we have black and white. Now, black and white is not a winner. And if I had to select between these four, actually, I'm quite curious about the look I could create using the sharp option. And what I don't like here is that the foreground is really dark. And I think that has something to do with how shadows are changed by this look. But everything else looks pretty interesting to me. So what I'd like to do now is to apply sharp. So I'm going to tap the OK check mark on the right. And now I'll head to Edit History. And I'll select View Edits. And what I can see is that we just have one step into an image. So if we open that up, uh, there's probably a shadows adjustment. And indeed, there is a shadows of minus 65, which is really, really strong. Uh, but what I could do instead is just fix this shadows problem. And I think the optimal value for this photo is something like minus 10. And now, if I go ahead and apply these changes, you'll see that uh, we now have a much better look uh, where we don't have shadows that are too dark. But at the same time, we have this really interesting color scheme that I happen to like a lot. It is on the cold side. It is slightly desaturated. But I think it looks really, really interesting. And the best part about this is that probably I would have never thought of creating a color scheme like this otherwise. But because I had these looks saved, I arrived at this idea, and it turned out to be quite successful. So what I'd like to do now is to hit the back button and quickly wrap up this edit with just one step. And that one step is cropping the image. So this specific composition is really meant to be a square, in my opinion. So I'm going to select Square. And now, all I want to do is create a symmetrical crop where the subject is exactly in the center, more or less like this. And if I apply that crop, I have now created a really beautiful photo. And the way it looks is quite unique. And probably, I would not have thought of this if I wasn't using the predefined looks that I simply saved from my past edits. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my work. And this is how you can use custom looks to generate new ideas for your future edits.